So, the OnePlus One, the flagship killer. Sometimes. So, the OnePlus One has recently been having some touchscreen issues all over the place. Some people have been registering the fact that their screens have been responding on half of the display and not on the other. My instance has been the fact that I've been having loads of ghost touches, loads of just random little occurrences where, where my touches on the actual display will not register. So, the way that I found this out is I'm in the middle of exams at the moment and I should not be recording this, but um, I'm taking very long car journeys every day. I say very long, they're about 45 minutes, but England is very warm at the moment and the car is also very warm when I'm travelling. So, what's been happening is whenever my display or my actual device heats up because it's been in the car, I'm beginning to get ghost touches and random taps, as I say. So, if I'm in the car using Facebook or texting, not while driving, of course, um, in the car using Facebook, Twitter, any any social media or anything um, what, that uses the display to a greater degree, it ends up becoming co completely unresponsive and I just, I can't use it, I get, so if I'm typing for instance, I get swipes across the keyboard and I'll show you an example of this. So I usually type quite quickly um, and it just makes typing impossible to be perfectly honest. Um, other than that, I haven't actually had any issues with the OnePlus One thus far. In fact, it's been pretty much perfect as a device. Um, so, what I began to think about when I noticed this, I was doing some reading up online and some people were saying that this could be related to a flex cable or a ribbon cable, I forget which of the two it is actually, that is up against the metal banding in the display. Um, the glue sometimes melts in very hot conditions um, and I was wondering, oh, is this what's happened here? Do I need to RMA my device? Um, so I got very worried about this situation. Is it a ribbon cable or is it something else? So, as I said, ribbon cable, that would be a hardware error. That would mean I would have to RMA my device. I really did not want to send my device back because some people have been having it take months sometimes to get their device back. And in all honesty, like, I realise people say that sort of thing about the modern generation, but I can't live without a phone. Dude, I need this technology. Um, so I essentially posted on the OnePlus One forum saying, here's my problem. It could be one of the two things. It could be a hardware error or it could be a software error. So the touchscreen is controlled by the kernel and so is the driver. And I was wondering, is there a patch that has failed? Is there a driver that has gone wrong? I didn't really know, but I wanted to check it out anyway. So. I post that on the OnePlus One forums. I'm not sure I ever actually got a response on the OnePlus One forums, but hey. I then also moved my post to the Google Plus forums, the OnePlus One community on Google Plus, which has always been fantastic. I've done some really, really great stuff with them, and I recommend you check them out. So, as I said, I moved my post to the Google Plus OnePlus One community, and um, within minutes, sort of comments started flooding in saying, I've had similar issues, um, let's keep this thread alive and see if anything turns up. Then a user who was very knowledgeable about the topic uh, popped up and said, I think it's a kernel fault. Um, I had a similar issue and I flashed this modified kernel, which I will show in the actual desktop video, screen recording, whatever, one of the two. So um, he said, I flashed this kernel and since then I have had no problems whatsoever. So I was slightly sceptical of this because I was sort of leaning on the hardware error side of things. So I was very sceptical as to what had happened here. But I thought, yeah, what's the worst can happen? It's a kernel, I'll flash it anyway. Up until this point, I had been running Franco's R30... The second latest Franco kernel. I don't know what number it is, I should really find that out. Put a little asterisk somewhere there. Um, yes, yeah, so as I said, I had been running Franco kernel, and that had been fantastic for performance, but this touchscreen error had suddenly turned up. So, what was I going to do? I went and flashed that kernel and it took a good while for my device to come back on. You know how you get sort of... So when, when you flash something through the recovery, as I'll show you, you get the option to clear the Dalvik cache and the standard cache. Always a good idea to do that, just because it clears up some excess, just sort of mess, and it's quite useful. Um, yeah, so I did that, and then the device rebooted, and it, was, it took ages optimising apps and sort of getting the software ready to work again. Um, and at that point I thought, oh, I hope nothing's gone wrong. And the other thing was, so my um, device, after it had finished this loading process, it got stuck. It was sort of just, it had a black screen for a couple of minutes, and then it actually popped back up into the OS. And I couldn't really work out what happened, I was kind of nervous. But hey, um, yeah, so I'll jump over into the desktop video, and we'll have a look at the actual process. Boom. I hope that was in focus. 
Here we are on the desktop video, so what I'm going to show you here is exactly what's happened with the keyboard. That I realise that's not actually part of the desktop video, but hey. So what was going on was, as you can see, there were just... I, I'm typing completely normally here, this is my normal sort of typing speed, and as you can see there are lots of little jumps and jitters around the screen, just touches that weren't registering. And as I said before, that's making typing just complete hell at this point. So I was coming out of exams and just sort of talking to people about the exams or whatever, and I would be typing, and it would take me a good 10 minutes to type out a half-decent text message just because I'd have to type very, very carefully. And it sort of felt like my touches were almost too light, I want to say. Like, I wasn't tapping hard enough on the display, which wasn't true. I have a tempered glass screen protector on there, fair enough. That's going to reduce the sort of tactile ability of the display that's not a very way good way of putting that but hey um yeah so that i thought maybe it's the screen protector or something like that but then i threw that out the window as soon as i looked online to see what other issues were so as you can see here i went online um i went to the one plus one forums posted there and then posted on the google plus forums as i said uh then this user linked me to the kernel that he was using and I went and downloaded it from the XDA page that is linked in the description um, and it was uh, literally as simple as that. One thing that if you're flashing for the first time that is important to remember so usually when you download a zip archive you think oh well I'll extract that don't extract the kernel image that's not gonna help you in any way shape or form leave it in its zip folder or container I suppose um, yeah transfer the file to your device through the utility um, reboot into your recovery as you can see I'm doing here and then you want to jump across to the install section you want to select the zip file from your device as you can see I'm not actually doing this here and I wish I had done however I didn't want to go through the flashing process all over again because it seems slightly beside the point so you hit install you swipe to confirm flash and that's that process. It will ask you afterwards whether you want to wipe the Dalvik cache as well. I would recommend that you do, just because it does clear up some extra rubbish that's just lying around the device, and I think it is helpful. Um, after that, you just leave your device to reboot normally. What I've had with this kernel, which is slightly worrying, I must admit, when my device reboots, it gives me about two seconds or so after I've had my boot screen, my so my boot animation has finished. I have about two seconds of black before it boots to my screen, and I have to enter my pass my password. Um, I haven't really worked out why that is, but that appears to be the case. I can't really, really work that one out for myself. But hey, it doesn't appear to be affecting performance perversely or anything. As for performance with this kernel, actually, it's performing very, very well. One thing I do miss is um, the ability to undervolt because that's not supported by this kernel apparently because I can't find it anywhere maybe it is if you know of it um, then feel free to inform me I've got device control I think it's called installed with the Franco kernel I would use um, the Franco kernel app which I have paid for but I think I'm going to have to wait for R34 to roll out before I update to that again yeah so thank you very much for watching this video um, it's been a good one, and I hope that you also manage to fix the issues that your OnePlus One is having. Just give it a shot and let me know how it goes. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. I always end with a snap. I think it was, you know. Wait, where's focus? I think it might not be in focus. Shit. So, uh, he suggested I try flashing a different kernel. Um, one that has Toby. What are you doing? What are you talking to? The camera, because I'm shooting it. <coughs> Is it right? What? <laughs> okay. I'm shooting something for the One Plus One community. Lost my train of thought. <laughs>